Well, today I was watching the early um, network news, and um, this uh, doctor was being interviewed. Red-headed guy, looked like he was in his 40 years of, of age, uh, should be recently educated. And, uh, you know, he had the usual doctor pose with his white coat and all that kind of stuff. He was asked about strokes. And he said, oh, well, that's due to cholesterol and, you know, eating too much saturated fat and so forth. And you need to get statin drugs to lower your cholesterol. And, uh, you know, the first symptoms are you might get dizzy and so forth, call 911. So that was it. Well, that's not true. That's absolutely positively not true. That's one of my nine lawsuits against the uh, FDA in federal court, and I prevailed. And the truth about strokes are this. There's two types of strokes. 80, 85% of all strokes are thrombotic stroke where you get a blood clot, which is due to an omega-3 essential fatty acid deficiency. That's right, an essential fatty acid deficiency, or a ratio problem between omega-3, 6s, and 9s. And 15% of strokes are due to what they call hemorrhagic strokes, where you get a ruptured aneurysm of a small artery in the brain or a tear in a vein in the brain. And this is all caused by a deficiency of a single mineral, which is required to maintain the, the strength and, and function of the elastic fibers in blood vessels. They break and fall apart, you get an aneurysm, it ruptures in the brain, you get a hemorrhagic stroke. Well, and of course, that goes true for all the cardiovascular diseases, congestive heart failure, cardiomyopathy, heart disease, coronary artery disease, um, and things like um, uh, thrombotic stroke or even hemorrhagic stroke. I want you to get a hold of the book, Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, the book Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and the book Rare Earths Been Cures, and you'll know more about strokes, thrombotic stroke, hemorrhagic stroke, and cardiovascular disease than, than cardiologists in, you know, two days' worth of reading. This is very, very disturbing for me. They're still giving outdated advice, which is actually dangerous for the listener or viewer, okay? So, again, I want you to get a hold of the books Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, the book Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and the book Rare Earths Been Cures. Now, cardiovascular disease is just as bad. Of course, they blame everything on cholesterol and saturated fat and salt, whereas um, you get things like um, congestive heart failure is due to a deficiency of a single vitamin. You get cardiomyopathy heart disease. I'm a world's expert on that one. Nobody else has done 1,700 autopsies on kids under the age of 10 that died of this disease suddenly. Cardiomyopathy heart disease, also known in China as Kishan disease, a deficiency of a single mineral. And then there's coronary artery disease, okay, where you get plugging of the arteries in the coronary arteries. It has nothing to do with saturated fat or cholesterol. It's actually caused by inflammation where people are eating fried foods and processed meats and oils and gluten, all the inflammatory things. And the... The arteries respond by making scar tissue in response to the inflammatory substances and has nothing to do with cholesterol and saturated fat. I wrote a paper on that in 1971, did special stains to show that there was no cholesterol or saturated fat in the obstructions. And then, of course, the coronary thrombosis and thrombotic stroke. These things are due to not cholesterol and saturated fat, but um, a deficiency of omega-3s or a ratio problem between omega-3s, 6s, and 9s. This is so, so, it's so disturbing. The medical doctors have the answer to this stuff and should be sharing this with viewers when they're on radio or TV giving an interview, and they're still talking about failed theories that go back over the last 200 years. And so I'm waggling my fingers at the medical profession. I'm also waggling my fingers at the interviewers of these um, uh, TV stations and radio stations because they should do a little bit of research. Uh, before they ask these guys who are actually um, guarding the gate to their financial source, okay? They're guarding the gates to their kingdom. And so what they want to do is continue treating people uh, in a false way as opposed to just resolving the problem or better yet, preventing the problem, all right? Now, I'm telling you that this is, is actually, I would say, insurance fraud. If somebody dies following their recommendations, it should be kind of like vehicular homicide when somebody is working on a cell phone or something like that and twittering or texting and they hit somebody and kill them. That's vehicular homicide. So when a doctor is giving misinformation over the public airways about how to prevent and deal with strokes, um, there should be something done about that. And I'll be happy to be an expert witness in favor of the injured party. Okay? I won't charge anything. We'll just make sure everybody knows the truth. So again, I urge you to get a hold of the book Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory Disease Transmission, the book Dead Doctors Don't Lie, and the book Rare Earths Been Cures, and learn out the truth about what causes cardiovascular disease, what causes stroke, okay? And 
cholesterol and saturated fat have nothing to do with it. Salt has nothing to do with it. Salt has nothing to do with any cardiovascular disease, including high blood pressure. Genetics has nothing to do with any cardiovascular disease. And um, uh, everybody who says this sort of stuff should have their licenses taken away from them. This is really bizarre stuff. A um, hundred years after we knew the answers. I mean, congestive heart failure, we knew the answer to that one, a single vitamin deficiency 300 years ago. I came out with my information on um, cardiomyopathy heart disease in 1989, okay? And so we have a huge problem here. We have a huge problem when you have a, a, a profession that proposes to be there on behalf of the patient and they're ripping the patient off and putting them in danger by giving them misinformation. We'll be back with dead doctors alive for these messages.